So we're going to take the time today to put together a new way 3.5 CFS Easy Flow Ramp Flume. This is how the package comes from the manufacturer. We've just simply opened the box. This is the smallest model that they make. It will do a maximum or measure a maximum of 3.5 CFS. When you open the package you'll receive a, a box just like this depending on the size of the flume will get larger and you'll receive a packet of instructions and a bag of the nuts and uh, screws for assembly. One of the benefits of this type of a flume is the cost because it's mass produced. You are able to save quite a bit of money in purchasing one of, this, uh, one of these easy flow ramp flumes. And uh, then it ships to you in a box, disassembled, and then you will use the instructions to assemble it on site and then install it in the ditch. Uh, each part will come labeled so that as you go through the instructions, you will find pictures that explain what each part is and diagrams as to what each labeled part does or where it fits. Uh, the Easy Flow Ramp Flumes come in four sizes at this point. There is the 3.5 CFS, that means it will measure a maximum of 3.5 CFS. There is also a 7 CFS, a 10 CFS, and a 20 CFS model. So the tools required generally for all of the models are simply a ratchet, a 3 8 inch a wrench. You can use all sorts of different types of tools. You basically need one tool to hold the nut and one tool to uh, screw in the uh, screw, whether you're using a Phillips screwdriver or a drill. And that's all of the tools that will be required to assemble the flume. What I've done is I've set the individual parts out onto the table based upon what will be most convenient for the assembly diagram to find each part. And now we're going to go to the page that discusses the assembly, which is quite simple. It's really just one paragraph. And it states to start with panel C on the flat surface and then take the panels A, which are both of these that have the measurement gauge in them and attach them to the red circle hole that is associated on each of them to begin making the sides. So they go on the inside as stated in the paragraph. We take one set of screw and bolt here and go through the pre-drilled holes Next are the top bracing. says in the instructions to place all three of these.
Next, we take the parts labeled O and attach them to the bottom of panel labeled K. And these are threaded holes, and so you're not required to use a, a nut. assembling part J to part K. This is the ramp portion that gives the flume its name. Place the assembled sill plate, which is the top, and the ramp into the frame. Attach with the screws on the side panel. This is where having the pre-threaded parts come in very handy. Okay, just finishing up tightening the bolts for this sill plate and for the, the hold the plate at the correct height. Recommend that you leave a little bit of looseness in these top uh, uh, brackets so that you can move the flume a little bit to get them lined up correctly and then once it's in you can come back and retighten and make sure everything is set nice and tight so next we're going to put these uh, letter H uh, units on and these are here for stability mainly so they're gonna go on like this And it doesn't really matter, I don't believe, whether they're this way or that way. Okay. And these braces will help as you backfill around it or, or add concrete around the flume to hold the flume steady in its place. Then we're going to put item I on which goes on the inlet to also provide a place for uh, stability and to hold the flume in place while it's in the channel. I uh, should mention part I isn't required uh, often it's used to avoid scouring and to keep uh, aquatic animals like crawfish from digging underneath, but it also works really well to attach to something like a railroad tie or to the end of a concrete pad to secure the flume. The last two items to go on are the inlet wing walls, and they will go in this and these direct the flow uh, into the throat of the flume and help with holding back uh, the soil and, and the stuff that you pour in on the sides. And then take your time to go around and make sure every bolt and nut is securely tightened down and then you will be completed.